All right, well, it's 6.01, and I'll um, start our um, little entry and keep an eye on the waiting room. <clears throat> Hello. I'm the Hello. chair of the Rochester Select Board. I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 01-20 and Act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Welcome, y'all. <clears throat> All right, we are providing public access to the meeting using the Zoom platform, and you can find access to that um, connection information by either going to the town website, referring to the <clears throat> posted meeting um, warnings throughout the town, or asking to be um, given emails directly from the town clerk. And um, and no one else is in the waiting room. So <clears throat> at this time, I'd take any additions to the agenda as it was typed up. Anybody? OK. I just had some information to share about what's coming up this, this week for meetings for me. So it's not really okay. an item. OK. Uh, so I'll also add that I sent the select board um, data on energy use from the Rochester High School for the last few years. Okay. So you can get a sense of what that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and should so, be in your inbox right now. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think I saw that come in. Um, I failed to print the agenda before I unplugged my main computer and went to my computer with the camera. So I, I, if I miss anything, you guys let me know. All oh, right. I'm, I'm the only guest mentioned in the very beginning, yeah. and yeah. I have something quick okay. to say. Yep, I saw that. So um, we'll start with the minutes from the last meeting. And um, I didn't see any any corrections on that. Did you guys? I didn't oh. either. No. I didn't but me neither i'd move to approve those then i second that all in favor aye aye yep um. <clears throat> so martha you are on the list as a guest what did you want to talk about um well i wanted to talk about fourth of july i know the governor has been talking about how things would be back to normal by fourth of july but when i talked to the person i talked to up um in the, the montpelier her impression was that what he was talking about was parties at people's homes, you know, that would be allowed in that kind of stuff. But she wasn't so sure about big events like parades and things. And that's what I was worried about. So I haven't heard back. I've left a couple messages. I haven't heard back anymore. Um, and they haven't made any announcements, of course, in public about, um, uh, you know, whether we'd be allowed to have parades and stuff. And I know because an event like, concerts on the park like we have and stuff people can stay far enough apart but at the parade we get a big crowd and everybody's all clenched together so and you can't guarantee everybody's going to wear a mask i don't know what I, I basically what i wanted to let you know was that i was working on trying to figure out if we were going to be allowed to do it by the state and also i wanted to find out how the select board felt about it because if you do or don't if you do want me to go ahead and try to keep to, to, to work on finding out if I can get it done, I'll do that, I'd be happy to. If you'd rather I didn't, um, if you think we should wait another year, then that's, a, you know, I'll follow whatever you guys think. So how far ahead do you need to be planning that, Martha? Um, well, let's see, I need to know by, at the very, by like the first of May, because um, um, I need to, it, usually I, that's when I send out all the invitation letters to everybody, um, you know. Um, so that would be like another month in another like five weeks mm -hmm. before I need to know. So I just was trying to give you guys a heads up. I just wanted to see what you thought, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't have a real opinion. I'd like it to happen, but on the other hand, I don't, I don't want, you know, to cause a problem. Yeah. Um, well, I think that at least we can wait another month to, to make the final decision. We'd have more information, but. Okay. Um, that, Hopefully I'll have heard back from somebody in Mount Pelier. Right. So we might have more information there. Um, 
I think that's the best we could do right now, unless you guys want to just say, let's hold it for a year. No, I think we, I think, don't know why we just don't hold off for a month or so. Yeah. We might have better information then. Yep. I would, I would follow the state guidelines, which I'm oh, sure yeah. questions coming up and it, it'll be a specific point in one of uh, Phil Scott's meetings coming up. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I've been listening to the ones that they have at lunchtime on the on the, you know on Channel Three. I think it's when they you know and the, but I haven't heard any. The only thing I heard about Fourth of July mentioned a family family picnics, and it didn't mention any sort of large big large events. So yeah. okay, I just was trying to get my ducks in a row. Yep. Thank you, thank you. All right, we'll keep the ducks in the barn for another month. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the. Um, First item on new business, was that the liquor license for Max? Yes. Yes. So um, I would move to approve. And I read that over and yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All, for All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> And was the next item, um, the Jeff giving us some information? A driveway permit, it says on mine. Driveway permit, okay, okay. Um, Ms. Nunn, we'll keep it on. So I did call the um, um, Joseph Peck um, and they have, a, they're looking at the, um, the Ainsworth's property and the application for a driveway if they should um, close on that property would be off of Austin Hill. And um, basically it's not specific, but it's um, some, you know, when you're headed downhill from um, the intersection up with Hawk, um, there's a big field on your right when you're going downhill as soon as it starts turning to forest again. Um, somewhere between there and where it gets to the crest of the steep hill. You're not sure exactly where it is, but it's a pretty straight shot. And I said it would have to be far enough back from the crest of the hill that there's a good line of sight. And um, I don't see any problem with that. It looks like he had Mac McGuffin lined up to um, put the culverts in. He's aware that it has to be a minimum 15 inch diameter culvert. And so um, there is a partial drive there already been there for forever yeah he said when he right across from Hoop's driveway yeah it was covered in snow and so he didn't know yeah. exactly but um yeah yeah it's just across from Pook's driveway mm -hmm. so, i think i think some of the guidelines don't like the idea of two driveways right across from one another i think when you have a choice you like to stagger the driveways um but uh cooter will be on that so yeah, yeah. When we approve it, it should be footnoted that Cooter also would uh, have a final say about the visibility of where they're putting it for people that are traveling on the road and yeah. he's comfortable with it as well. Um, we do use that side of the road for uh, drainage off of yes. us. Oh, yeah, it's a good drainage. So it had to be a significantly. Um, right. We don't want to. Yeah. Those systems we have going up for that road. So um, I would I would definitely footnote it that, you know, when, when the moment comes that he owns the property and he's uh, uh, moving equipment on there that he should uh, also have Cooter's blessing. Yep. So I should say that the board notes that, you know, that John Champion will have the final say on the exact placement. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, Did the uh, lower lot get sold too? Pardon? That? Did that lower field get sold also? It's under contract, but I, I don't know that it's uh, closing quite yet. The upper 90 something acres is definitely fast track and may already be closed, but um, that, that one is fast tracking uh, as a realtor. I see that that one's under contract, but it, it, it's not closed yet. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it closed yet. He, when I talked to him today, he said it was, anticipating it but it, he didn't say it was a done deal yet but you know, just um getting this paperwork set out so i guess i'd um uh, move to approve this condition on um one that the 
you know, him actually becoming the owner of the property and two with the final um, okay by Cooter on the placement. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, um, Jeff, you wanted to give us a little report here? I know um, you, you emailed it to us, but can you um, give us yeah, a summary? I can. Um, I was given um, a computer file uh, by the, uh, Amy Wilton got a hold of it for me um, and uh, was able to identify um, almost all of the Rochester High School accounts. There's still some question in my mind. The spreadsheet that I sent to you will show fiscal year 17, 18, 19, and a tiny bit of 20. There's not much data on 20. And I think on uh, fiscal year 19, we must have already been ramping back. In, in fiscal year 17 and 18, annual electrical and oil costs were, um, around $68,000 both of those years. Um, there is an, an oil tank, there's a tank three and a tank five, and I am not clear as to whether one or both or none are part of Rochester School. And so the custodian is supposed to be getting me the information on that. If that's the case, then the numbers are $1,000 higher roughly. Um, but it, the big, it, it's, it's an odd, there's some odd cost things happening here. The electrical expense in, in fiscal year 2017 was eight, almost 19,000 yet. Um, and the oil cost was 49,000, 49, And then fiscal year um, 2018, the electric expenses went up almost to 34,000 and the oil costs went down to 34,000. So there was quite a bit of fluctuation will need to be looked at as to why. So do you have, um, neither of those years were in the, the mothball state, correct? 17 and 18, I don't think were mothball. It looks like 19 yep. was. The last graduation was June, 2018. And those, you know, I did split those numbers by fiscal year, not calendar year. So, mm -hmm. so where were they coming from with the the, the estimate that it was twenty thousand to mothball the place? Good question. Good question. All right. Um, oh. I'll you continue have, to investigate. I'll find out whether the whether the tanks are are the schools or not, mm -hmm. um, and I can also look at heating degree days uh, to see if that explains the uh, the uh, heating fuel use. Yeah, but that a uh, uh, shift in the electric is kind of strange. Yeah, it's another one. It's strange yeah. one. Yeah. Now, was the were the um, school buses not being um, plugged into their block heaters one year and then maybe they would return to the school. Who knows? Could have been that. I don't know. Yeah. But um, that would be a lot of block heating. <laughs> yeah. Sure would. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you. Um, the puzzle continues around that building. <clears throat> um, so that is, is the other piece on the agenda is the um, the question of the select board support for the application for a uh, uh, planning grant around what could happen with that building. Is that yeah, what and to, it's something uh, and to hold a public hearing about the grant on April 8th, according to what mine says. So Pat, have you got some some um, background on that, where we're coming from? Uh, yes, the uh, I'm having a meeting tomorrow as well with a couple of the school board members um, also looking for their support for us to obtain the planning grant uh, because they are technically still owners of record. So um, I'm looking for their support on, on going forward with that. This is a planning grant. So this is a grant that uh, will enable us to hire somebody 
to um, really tear apart the um, ideas that we have for the school, um, how much square footage, um, they may even explore how much energy, um, you know, what, what would be the requirements for um, being commercial spaces. And um, that's what a, a planner would do for us to see if uh, the maker space and the child care and all of that um, conform to the building that we have. Um, we have already had a few meetings with um, certain uh entities uh, around community development, got some good connections. So what we're looking for is um, just a, a kind of public blessing that we continue to seek funding that will not cost the taxpayers anything in order to explore the possibility of what the options are that the Repurposing Commission has come up with. And, and whether or not uh, they're feasible. So it's kind of a feasibility study. Um, that is the first thing that, the first step before anybody takes, takes us seriously for any grant money is that, you know, we have to be substantiated in uh, what we want to do with the building. So. Um, um, excuse me, Pat, I have a question about that. Um, yeah. If you're, if, if it says here, um, to submit a high school planning building planning grant application and to hold a public hearing about the grant on April 8th. This public hearing, is the, that's not something where anybody would vote. This is just an informational um, hearing, right? Am I correct? correct? It's an informational hearing so that the public will be made aware Okay. Uh, than just uh, for, you know saying it during select boards. The requirement for the grant right. is we go out to the community and say, um, we are we are hiring someone to uh, investigate the options that we have for the building. Does anybody have any additional options? Do you have any criticisms of the options that we have we have selected? And um, so it, it'll just be a, a public opinion, right? So just to get information about the situation and express opinion. It yeah, and it's okay. a request for the for the planning grant. This, of course, of course. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't anything where anybody would be voting. So I'd make sure I got this correct in the paper. Yeah. Not yet. Okay, thank oh, you. No voting yet. Yeah. Those, those, those days will be coming. Okay, um, thank you. Sorry to, thank you for letting me interrupt. Thank you. So yeah, we're, we're this is, this all is in the name of um, full transparency. Okay. Um, that, uh, and, and then the discussion that I'm having with the school, with a couple school board mesh members tomorrow, along with uh, Kat probably, um, will be surrounding the same thing. Um, will the school board come forward and um, do a letter of support for us to explore the planning grant? Um, with that, there may be uh, additional uh, visits to the internal part of the building with specific people. Um, so are they going to be um, cooperative to that and if necessary will they uh, do the letter of support and possibly sign off on certain things so that we can continue exploring uh, what we what we would like to do with the building so that when we do go to the town and say um, here are the options for the building a b c and d um, we are very clear about what those options are And so, so it's um, so right now we're talking about the select board um, voicing support for that application, but it really that seems like the the main support for that has to come from the school board because it's still their building at this right. point. Yeah, that would be my guess. Yeah, we don't own the building. Yeah, they grant they can but it, grant. But we might still have to sign off on it doing right, it. Right, right. Just as right. a town, yeah. as an the, the grant. Part. The form for the grant actually has a question or a section where you can determine when you can identify that you don't own the building yet and that the current owner is approving this. That's there's uh, language all set up in the grant application itself. Right. So this grant ap applica application is um, by the town on behalf of the the envision committee. Is that correct? 
or is it the committee that's applying with support of the town? It has to come from the town. Yeah, okay, because they, yeah, more likely to give money to municipalities than just groups of people. Yes. So the select board is actually submitting the application. Am I correct about that? Yes. Okay, thank you. In, 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 in collaboration with the school board at this okay. point. Yeah. Right, yes, you're asking them for a letter of support for it. Yes. Okay. And the support of the Vermont Council on Rural Development who's providing this grant. Mm -hmm. writing right. we're person. a study a feasibility study basically yeah basically gathering more information which is what we right. need yeah yeah so we can make a better decision on what we want to do yeah so the grant is coming for the rock council on rural development yeah. if we if we get it yeah okay thank you also no, I'm not sure if that's where the grant money would actually come from. But that's, that's, who, where that's where the writer, the grant writer, Alyssa, is. So you're working. submitting the application to them, though, right? Is that correct? I think part of what they do is they identify all of the grant funding sources for different types of or different components of the project, uh, kind of going down the whole stream. Um, you know, it's it's a feasibility study has to, you know, lay the whole process out. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the next question is: To what extent would this um, application be construed by the school board as a um, gesture of good faith in their? Um, demands that we make our decision by the end of the month to whether or not we're going to buy the building. Because did obviously, we, did, did we ever get any response from them on the letter that we sent? The second letter from Jim? Um, I don't believe that second letter is passed on to them. That, that was just um, Jim's response oh. back to us. I don't think we went. We're still, that was something I want to talk about was how, how do we, um, present now this this information here this application of a grant seems like it would be a part of what our response to them and our, our request that I think we need to make that they they are a little more lenient with their deadlines about our decision right by the and by the looks of the cost there they have uh, they're not there's not a lot of cost involved with them as far as their heat and electricity if they leave the building as is for another year or so while we try to figure this out right i know that so. they are um they they are talking to the uh, suzuki people mm -hmm. and you know they're not at this point in time the the information i get which is you know unofficial because i don't think they've made a a deal with suzuki i don't think that's all finalized yet but as of right now they don't if Suzuki people are coming in July, they're not pulling the plug on the power in July in that building. Um, I, I think that the power will stay on. And, and, you know, of course, they won't be assuming a lot of heat bills during that period of time. No. Yeah. Um, that, that threat of unplugging the power, the, the Suzuki um, is kind of saving us from all of that for right now. Well, they're going to have to move all their communication out of there if they pull the plug on the building anyway. Yeah, they are. So yeah, they, they've got all the communication for the elementary school goes through the high school. The Suzuki Festival brings a lot of people into town and a lot of money and stuff. So it'd be a good thing if we could continue to have that. Safely. Don't yes. have to convince us. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, sorry. <laughs> and uh, on Wednesday, I'm meeting with jo Joan Goldstein, who is the uh, commissioner of uh, the Department of Economic Development. Um, I've known Joan for a long time, so I kind of called in, hey, old buddy, old pal, and um, uh, we have a meeting on, on Wednesday where we're going to start talking about um, uh, new money that's coming down the pike to towns um, from this most recent uh, APR, ARP, um, the, the, the latest COVID grant. Um, there, a lot of that's going to be allocated to municipalities, and um, but they're not exactly clear uh, for what reasons. So right. they're, they're waiting for the guidance on that. 
um, on how we could use it. But, um, you know, if, if Burlington's going to get $19 million out of this kitty, um, you know, we, we should be uh, getting a substantial little amount relative to the size of our town. Um, I, I'm not going to speculate as to how much we would get, but um, there could be money there um, that could could be utilized towards uh, this, or it could be utilized towards something else, which would free up funding towards the high school. So we're going to have that conversation on Wednesday. Well, I I um I would think that it's a good idea for the select board to express its support for this application for the grant. Yeah, I would I would think we'd want to do it to make it to uh, better educate ourselves on if this is a feasible project, which I have my doubts, but that's me. Um, but I think we have to look at it. Yeah. Right. This planner, you know, he's going, he's, he's, he's not going to like be on our side or anything. He's going to be very candid. And if I realize that, Pat, the, the, the thing that I fear is that we don't have the numbers to substantiate these wonderful entities that we want to start. We just don't have the population in our valley. Um, but that's what, that's what he or she will discover for us. And that's why we, we should do it. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. So I guess I'd move that we would, uh, um, when time comes, write a letter of support from behalf of the town for that grant. I said that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, that also means that we would, uh, the select board is okay with a public hearing on April 8th. Um, are there any details about the hearing that you'd want me to put in the article? Um, there's another paper before the, the eighth, uh, there's one on the first, but I just want, as far as like a time or, you know, you know, get the zoom link on the town website or something like that. Or, you you know, from uh, Vic and Catherine. Okay. So they'll probably get in touch with me to put something in the paper about it. Okay. okay thank you. So. All right, like I said, I don't have the agenda printed. What else is on there? Probably about better ask Joan. Uh, the, I see the usual stuff like Joan's updates and the highway and- Yep. 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 All right, Joan, what do you got? Okay, the only thing is uh, I just finished the all the reports and various uh, documents that need to be filed with VTrans uh, for whenever we have that annual meeting with them. Um, so just want to let you know that I'll be leaving, well, I'm going to send it electronically to uh, Julie so she can print it out for you. And if the three of you sometime in the next few days could come in and just uh, sign their couple documents and I'll ask Julie to uh, label them for you. Um, and then she'll send them back to me. All right. This is for? Uh, it's the v annual VTrans reports, financial reports and other documents that they uh, that we file with them every year. Okay. Yeah. No meetings though. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what's happening with that. They're supposed to get in touch with us. And if we do have one, it's likely to be virtual at this point, but mm -hmm. I don't know as soon as I hear from them. I did meet with Chris Bump and, and John there last week. And we walked in the village there a little bit to look at the storm drains. Um, and he's under the impression that we're going to have to do our own raising of our shutoffs for the sewer and water at our expense. So we'd have to contract the, the paver, whoever gets the job to do that. So we may have to order the parts for all those shutoffs. So I'll, we'll have to be in touch with Terry on that to see how many we got to deal with. Um, Cause they are, they will be our issue. And that's in uh, uh, 2022, next year, correct? That's right. They're going to do the culverts this year, and there's somewhere around 30 of them. Are the actual culverts or cross drains, Frank? Uh, the culverts. They're, They're culverts. starting in, at the beginning of the job and coming right, right through. They're going to do those this summer. Hmm. <clears throat> 
and um and about the storm drains did they have any input on those the storm drains they felt they were adequate we told them the one right there by the skip mart in the park um that gets plugged is plugged or something they're gonna have to deal with that this summer at some point and they didn't feel it would be necessary to uh do anything there by the hardware there where that storm drain gets covered up with the snow they they felt that that could be taken care of by maybe trying to do a different approach to plowing that so they weren't too interested in adding anything yeah hank who was this that you met with i'm sorry that you did the walkthrough i didn't catch his name chris, chris bump from vtrans right yeah. yeah okay thank you And they are going to pave out all like to the grass at the library and you know so it's got a nice flair to it and there by the skip mark right through to probably just about where the sidewalk is i think is the way they're going to leave it i think and kind of shape it to make that storm drain work better they figured they could do it all with shaping to make that not pond at all Joan, did you have anything else? Um, no. No. What's on the horizon for you? Oh, putting out the next, the rest of the FEMA jobs, uh, putting them out to bid beginning of April. And I'm gonna coordinate with um, the bid that goes out for the retaining wall by the town office. Um, and resubmitting stru two structures grants uh, we submitted last year. Uh, just resubmit those and update them. They're due on April 15th. And still working on FEMA stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. What else is on that agenda? Um, go ahead. That's about it. Yeah, the other things were like library uh, and um, yeah, Tony. Uh, we're still doing porch pickup, but things are changing quite rapidly. So the best way to get information is probably in the paper and on the bulletin boards uh, around town because there may be a, a more opening time. That's good news. I hope, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to chat about tonight? Uh, I just got one thing. I, Jeff talked to me about us making Marvin the uh, energy coordinator. Yeah. And I think we we kind of have Jeff doing all our energy coordinating. I'm wondering if I think that maybe should, that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we should change that appointment, nothing against Marv or anything, but, oh, but Jeff is doing a lot of stuff for us at this point. Yeah. And it might make it just a little bit smoother thing. Is that fair enough with you guys? I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'd move to um, re-coordinate the energy coordinator towards Jeff instead of Marvin. I'll second that and I'll tell him. Okay. All right. Hey. <laughs> tell him we're still now I can get in now I can get all the blame. Up. We we thank him very much for all his due diligence, but <laughs> yeah. But Jeff certainly I brought a lot of solar into this town. Um yep. it, and Marvin is still on the solid waste alliance committee, right? Yes, he is. Yep. All right. When is he coming back? Do you know? Uh, beginning of May. Beginning of May. All right. Okay. If, if uh, it's okay, I mean, I don't know yeah. if it's okay with it not being on your agenda, but um, it thought about it when Martha was talking about the 4th of July. I have been working towards planning a Mo Electric campaign day um, and, and approached the select board a few weeks ago about the, you know, who do I need to get approval from? 
I would see this as being a, an event with fewer people than attended the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. But we certainly would have to buy, abide by the state guidelines, CDC guidelines and everything. If they are no more severe than the farmer's market, we could certainly you know, do it in a distanced manner. Um, would and what was the name of this event? Something electric, what? Uh, the Mo Electric campaign. Mo Electric, M O. Yep, M O W. M O W. Electric. And and there's uh, there's a statewide campaign that has been developed, and we have some statewide producers of actually some of the best of the electric uh, commercial electric mowing equipment, and then we'd want to get residential mowing equipment in as well. Um, the likelihood, I am told, from these vendors is that you've got a really a two-year conversion process with the commercial people. Um, but, you know, I, we can't do it too early because we need to have something to mow. So <laughs> it's got to be like mid-May or early June. Um, so that's, not, that's another reason why it's not likely to have an impact in a, you know, the year that they see it. Um, and the other thing that, um, you know, I will do more work before I formally pop this question to you, but um, we got to look at the economics of this. I am told by the people who are using the equipment that it is very good. Um, and if that is the case, um, we would have an opportunity with the next town mowing contract to say that we need this done electrically. So you said something about you your work you want to have a mo electric day so this would be like an event a demonstration. demonstration demonstration it probably won't go a whole day but um, okay you know something uh, so something on the park May probably. on the park would be a good location it could be done at the ball fields too some some other places okay. but uh, but the uh, park is a good one you know our, our actual transportation energy use as a state is worse than our building energy use. So, uh, and lawnmowers are actually very inefficient uh, pieces of equipment. Um, so it's a start and it's something that if we were able to accomplish it uh, would be something that people all over the community see. Um, yeah. And you know, how come that mower is so quiet as it's going around <laughs> the park? Mm -hmm. It would be nice. Well, right. speaking, speaking of the park, I know that um, I'm on the rec committee and I know that um, Joe Shankman has uh, organized, already organized, he told me eight different concerts for the park for this summer because there's no reason we can't have them because they're outdoors and people can be far enough apart. So that's something that's coming up. Um, and I don't think he's ever had to ask permission from you as a board. I, I don't think so. Um, no, it's, it's on this part of the rec committee. I think that was yeah, because he, he, he yeah. asked me, a, he, he just wanted to let me know about it because he's going to have me put something in the paper when, when yeah. he gets all the, the dates. But so we're just hoping, you know, and I hear the farmer's market is going to happen. So um, I'll let you know if I hear anything more from the state about the 4th of July. I don't yeah. know. I, I'm willing to do it. I, I just want to make sure I just I'm, want it to be a, a, a safe event. That's all. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be in the news as time um, yeah, okay. goes closer. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No worries. Yeah. So yeah, Jeffrey, I, I'm I'm fine with that um, demonstration event at a time to be determined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've got there are three different vendors, and then there's the fellow that's operating the campaign aspect of it. So I'm mm -hmm. talking with them about once a good date um, to get their equipment here and. Do I need to review this with the rec committee also? Uh, you need no? a form that uh, allows you to use the park. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually the park committee. <laughs> and okay. I've, I've, had, I've had to sign off. I would it. actually hold that down at the ball field, actually, Jeff. Yeah. That might be yeah. a better More room. Yeah, yeah. OK, Where, wherever you want to hold it. OK. Better. That might be a better venue for it. OK. In which case, yep. I don't think you have to ask anybody. <laughs> Although there, it would be no, I mean, you wouldn't get a pass through person stopping. They'd have to know about it probably. Right. Yeah. The yeah, the thing, thing. I, the, I was thinking about was the park was, you're right. People would be going by and going, oh, what's happening and, and stop to see, you know. We could have signage. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's a good idea. I can do it either way. It's not a, okay. not a make well, wherever. But wherever. Everybody loves our green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you talking, Nancy? I see your lips moving, but I didn't hear you. No, no. <laughs> Just hungry. Okay. All right. Well, um, anything else? No, nope, then um, I guess I'd um, close this part of the meeting and, and move to go into executive session just to talk a little bit more about real estate issues. And thank you all for, for coming. <laughs>